this day. So God, we lift you in this place to give you the glory and the honor. We want to give you the praise and thank you for all that you've done. You promised that if we build it in your name that you would show up. So God, we dedicated everything about this place. But most of all, we dedicated our lives to come and worship you, glorify you, and lift you up. Now, God, we ask that God would bless those that are on the way. Bless those that are watching and will watch. Bless those that are traveling on the highways and the byways. Oh, God, that they may enter into those places that they're traveling to. God, we ask that God would bless every place opened up in your name. For every word that shall be preached today in your name. Every evangelism that is done in your name. Everything that is done to your glory and your honor. We ask that God would bless it. Now have your way in the master's name of Jesus the Christ we pray. And all that love the Lord say amen, 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 amen. and amen. In the front of your bulletin this morning, him, glory to his name.
when she sends out the notification for the Zoom meeting. Also, the Peter Hall Memorial Clinic is sponsoring uh, an annual Kids Day event, and they are looking for uh, small gift cards with the amount of $5 so that they can uh, treat those kids to McDonald's or Burger King or something of that. So we need to have all of those things in by July 24th. As well, we want to continue to support our Urban League for all that they're doing and all the ways that they're helping those that are coming out of incarceration. And so again, we want to be a support to them on Third and Fourth Sunday, whether you have personal items, toothpaste, toothbrush, deodorant, all of those things, socks, shirts, shoes, clothing, whatever. We want to be a blessing for those coming out to help them to start. Uh, Brother Nichols shared with us uh, last week, uh, the Urban League was one of the honorees, and he shared with us that a young man coming out of incarceration came over to their office, and when he left, he had a backpack full of personal items and some clothing items, and he expressed to us how, how much that young man was excited to have received those things and uh, how grateful he was that those of us that gave and will give would do that for someone like him. So Matthew 25 is our guideline, and so we want to continue to give and support as God has blessed us. As we go through the year, again, all our annual days, you can continue to pay on them as we go, Men's Day, Church Anniversary, Women's Day. And if you got some extra money, go on and give that as well, amen? Be mindful of all of those that are sick and shut in. Sister uh, Kareem Allen, Sister Eula Andrews, Sister Martha Freeman, Sister uh, Brother Robert Freeman, Sister Essie Hopkins, Sister Sheila Miles, and then those on special prayer request. Uh, Sister Marie Brown, Sister Kim Johnson, and Sister Anita Love. Let us be mindful of all of those things. Let us be mindful of one another as we go down in prayer that we may ask the Lord to bless us and to keep us as we go forward in our life. Amen? Hello? Amen. Amen. All right. I just want to make sure everybody's awake. We, we ain't got the preaching yet. We get the preaching, you can go to sleep. Amen? Amen. Let us go to our book of Psalms this morning for our scripture reading. And then we're going to have Reverend Dean come and lead us in prayer. We want to go to the 119th Psalm. Amen. Stand to your feet when you get it. And then we want to go to the 105th verse. Psalm 119, verse 105. Thy word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. Thus ends the reading of our scripture for this morning. May the word of the Lord take deep root into our heart. I need the Ah, uh -huh. 
your face. Allow them to feed love instead of hate. Evil. Too much evil in the world. Too much shooting in the world. Keep on 
teaching us how to love. Keep on showing us your love. You have us on the wake up list this morning. Because you got something for us to do. You got something for us to do. Let us figure it out by talking to you on a daily basis. Talking to you and asking you to just cover us. Cover every church. Cover every country. Lord, I don't ever want to forget about the world leaders. Touch them and does them. And let them know that he can do good.
word is a light unto my feet and a light unto my path. I want to talk about the light of life. The light of life. I don't really probably even need to say this. Because it's flashing all around us day in and day out. During the day, during the night, it's happening in any and every place. When we look around and we see our schools being shot up, churches being shot up, there is no more sanctity in the world. There was a time when places like the church and the school held a sacred place and Nobody would do anything in those places to disgrace them whatsoever. We are at a time in the life of humans that we need clarity of direction. Not by the direction of men, but by the direction of God's word. Too many people are trying to direct us and are not leading people, and are, excuse me, and are leading people straight to hell. If we would turn ourselves to God, turn our lives, turn our talk, turn our walk, turn everything over to God, then God will lead us in the path of righteousness. The word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. The word is of God and the word is God. Y'all can help me. Y'all know the passage. When a person walks in the darkness at night, one cannot see the path ahead and you don't know where your feet will land. The lamp in front of your feet will guide you step by step. We all know somewhere along the line. We've gotten up in the middle of the night and we don't want to turn the light on. And then all of a sudden, there's a big noise of ouch. Because we were stepping where we couldn't see. Had we turned the light on, we would have been able to avoid that particular ouch or that particular uh, uh, scratch or whatever it may have been to our feet. The light on the path shows you the path ahead and the direction ahead. In the same way, the Word of God is the lamp unto our feet, the light unto our pathway, guiding us along the path of life, the path of eternal life, the, that light that takes us all the way from earth and delivers us into heaven before the God who's able to do all things exceedingly and abundantly well. God uses his word to teach us, and he uses his word to instruct us, and he uses his word to guide us. We follow him step by step along the pathway of life, where we put the word of God in our hearts so that we will not offend him, far or fall far from him, but get closer to him. That's why we must always be willing and ready to study the Word of God. For the Word of God will always lead us in a plain path. It will always lead us in the direction that God would have us to go. And most of all, it will put us closer to Him. We obey His Word. We obey His will. We seek in Him with all of our hearts, our minds, and our soul and experience his presence and receive his blessing. Whenever we do what God wants us to do, God is always willing and ready to bless us and reward us for walking in the plain path of righteousness. The truth of it is that too many people, when we look at it, have been blessed when they didn't deserve to be blessed and want more blessings and don't want to do anything, don't want to walk in a plain path of righteousness, don't want to do anything, but yet they want to receive the blessings of God. The psalmist that is here walked in the road of life. The word of God made his steps clearer. 
You see, when you do what God wants you to do, he opens up that window of heaven. He makes a way out of nowhere. He pushes your enemies to the side. He makes the mountain so that you can go over it. He makes it so even if you're in the valley, you can come out of it. When we follow the word of God, it is always going to be a light unto our pathway. And it is always going to guide us through this world below. When we look at this, he would not know where to step without the guidance of God's word. My brothers and my sisters, for those of us that are willing and would submit and tell the truth right now, had it not been for God showing up in our life, giving us light unto our life, we would all be lost right now. Some of us would probably be dead. Some of us would probably be a drug addict, an alcoholic, or some other worse things in this life. But because we've accepted the word of God and we use the word of God as a light unto our life, we're able to go through some things and know that when we've gone through them, it's not because we were able to see us through, but it was because of the light of the word of God that helped us to see through what we went through. It is possible to walk the path of life without knowing where our steps will fall. But as long as we got King Jesus, as long as we got God, and we walk with God, we talk with God, we follow God every step of the way, God will always lead us and direct us in the right pathway. We don't know if our foot will step on good ground or dangerous ground. We're not self-aware. God's word can be a lamp unto our feet. All I can tell you is that if we take the word and we use it as our God, if we use it to light up our light and help to light up the lives around us, imagine how much better the world would be. When everybody decides that they're going to walk in the pathway of righteousness through that which Jesus Christ bled, suffered, and died for. Imagine not waking up in the morning finding out that 10, 12, 15 people have been shot or killed. Imagine waking up if people were walking in the pathway of righteousness by the light which God gives us that there be no more of child abuse, there be no more abuse whatsoever. No, there wouldn't be a need of an argument about abortion or anything else, because if we're walking in the pathway of righteousness, it will lead us down the right road. It will help us to make the right decision. It will help all of us, young and old, to know that we live by the light of Jesus Christ. Simply said, the Bible should help us walk the way God wants us to walk. Not the way that the world tells us that we should walk. If you've ever watched a modeling show, the, the models, male and female, have to walk down the runway a certain way. If you don't have that type of walk, they won't put you in the show. It's something that they try to teach you over and over again. But I want to tell you today that if we walk the way God tells us to walk, if we walk in the path that he puts before us, I can tell you that in the midst of it, he will lead you all the way from earth to heaven. I'm not telling you today that there won't be some bumps in the road. I'm not telling you that there won't be some crying from your eyes. I won't, I'm not going to tell you that there's not going to be a time that you're going to feel alone. But I can tell you that if you walk with God, he'll make sure you get to where you're supposed to be. If you walk with God, he'll wipe away every tear from your eyes. If you walk with God, he'll show you that he's a friend closer than any friend you can have. Think, think of all the different words we could use to clarify walking. We could use the word stroll. 
We could use the word sunder, amber, a trench, hard. We could use height, tramp, uh, uh, slug, stop, march, scribe. We could use all of these words in the midst of it. And the truth of it is, they all come back to the same thing. It's a walk. It's a walk that we need to understand. Sometimes, we've got to give up some things in order to walk with God. Sometimes, we've got to give up family. Sometimes, we've got to give up friends. Sometimes, we've got to give up the world. But I want to tell you that if you give up everything and you get Jesus, you get all the riches of God's glory. The different words show that there are many ways to walk. And each of them says something. How are Christians to walk? Well, Ephesians 4, 1 says that we ought to walk worthy. We ought to walk worthy in being called a Christian, a follower, a believer of God. Isaiah 57 and 2 says we ought to walk uprightly. So my brothers and my sisters, it's not about who can see you, but it's about knowing that God can see you at all times that we walk uprightly. Yes, uh, 1 John uh, 1 and 7 says we ought to walk in the light. We ought to be walking so that when men, women, boys, and girls see us, that there is a light inside of us shining. That when they ask you what that light is, you can tell them it's the light of Jesus Christ. Uh, uh, we ought to as well. In Micah 6 and 8 says that we ought to walk humbly. Don't think more of yourself than what you really are. We ought to know that we all are sinners falling short and that we've been saved by the glory of God. You see, when we humble ourselves, when we're willing to walk humbly and walk in a perspective of light because God has granted us. Did you not hear in what Reverend Dean said? He granted us another day. He gave us new blessings. He gave us new grace. He gave us new mercies. He gave us another chance. That's enough all by ourselves to take the word of God and use it as a light unto our pathway. We cannot do any of these things without the word of God lighting our way. The picture of a lamp says something. This is our passage in a dark and perilous way. It, it eradicated by the light lamp and the light of the word. But except the light be lit. You see, my brothers and my sisters, you can have a lamp, but you don't have any oil in it. If you have a lamp, it can be as pretty as you want it to be. But you got no light and you got no oil in it. You see, that's what the Word of God gives us in each of us. Yes, we look good. Yes, we can dress up. We can make ourselves look glamorous. But unless we've got the light of Jesus inside of us, it is a light that is continuous. It's a light that will never go out. Even when death comes, your light won't go out. Even when they put you in the grave, your light won't go out. Because when you've got the light of Jesus Christ, when you've got the light of the Word, people will look back at your life and remember the things that you did, the way you walk, the way you talk, and the way you live. But most of all, they'll know how you glorify a God that was able to keep you from falling, a God that was able to pick you up, a God that was able to wipe away tears, a God that was right there with you when everybody else left you alone. Listen here. But except this light, this lamp be lit, my brothers and my sisters, except the teaching of the spiritual accounting of the word, all is darkness, thick darkness. Let us not be content to read the word without obligating ourselves to be in the light and to have understanding of the word of God. 
The word of God shows uh, where it is and our footsteps should go. You see, my brothers and my sisters, some time ago, you and I got to realize that it had not been for him showing us where to put our feet. You see, so many people started out on this journey, but they left because they were looking at a different life. You see, the life of Jesus never changes. It's the same yesterday, it's the same today, and if you're ready, it shall be the same tomorrow. You see, it has nothing to do with fashion, has nothing to do with the size of the church, has nothing to do with the preacher, has nothing to do with the name, but the word of God was good yesterday, it's good today, and it's going to be good tomorrow. Doesn't matter who sings the word of God, doesn't matter who preaches the word of God, doesn't matter who walks in the word of God, but what matters is the word of God. Listen here, when we look at this, the path we should remain upon is the path that will light your way. It is the path that helps us each and every day. When we follow the word of God, it will show us the next few steps to take. I believe that's why Sister Bernice sang that song, I believe I run on and see what the end will bring. You see, the fact is, we're running and we're not knowing where we're running to, but we know who we're running to. Therefore, that it is that in the midst of it, we've heard all of the stories we've seen in the scriptures about heaven, but the truth of it is, I want to see heaven for myself. I want to see the God that created the heaven and the earth. I want to see the man that died on Calvary, the man that was willing to put his life on the cross, bled, suffered, and died, but here's where I get my shout, got up on the third day morning with all power in his hand. The Bible, the Bible will teach us right from wrong. Yeah, yeah. The Bible tells us that we ought to teach our children, lead them in the direction that when they grow old, they will not depart. My brothers and my sisters, I'm watching a world right now that is not teaching our children the right direction. I'm watching a world right now where children are growing up not knowing whether they're able to walk to school without somebody shooting them down. Whether they make it in the school and somebody will bust in the school and kill them in the school. You see, my brothers and my sisters, we're living in a world where kids don't know if their mama going to leave them in the car with a hundred degree weather and they're going to die in the car. I wish I had help this morning. We don't know whether or not when Sunday comes, whether it's Wednesday night or Tuesday night, and we enter into the church to give God glory and to praise his name, whether somebody going to come through the door shooting and killing. We don't know when some crazy man that's leaving another country decides he's going to declare war on somebody else. But what I want to tell you today is that if you walk in the right light, if you live to the glory of God, his word will be a light unto your feet. It will help you to walk down the pathway that God wants you to go to. Let me tell you, the word of God is higher even than our conscience. It teaches us our conscience how to live right. You see, you know when you've done something wrong. And when you know you've done something wrong, if you ask God for forgiveness, God will now show you the light and he'll show you the direction you ought to go. This is not a convenient God for one's career, but the truth for a moral character of who you want to be. I don't know about you, but when I think about the goodness of the Lord, when I think about what God did for me, when I think how he sacrificed his son on Calvary's cross. It ought to cause you and it ought to cause me to live better each and every day. It ought to cause me and it ought to cause you to forgive each other of our falling short.
because the truth is that the Bible says that we've all fallen short of the glory of God. Listen here. One of the most practical benefits of holy writ is guidance in the act of our daily life. These pictures show us that the word of God is light and it brings light. It, it does not make things darker or harder to understand. You see, sometimes in the church, we make things hard on one another. Sometimes in the church, we make it hard for those that want to come out of darkness into a marvelous light. You see, we want to put our standard on this instead of letting God's standard be the standard for anybody that comes. You see, it's always something that we want. But how many of us in any and every church opened up in his name ever sacrificed their son on Calvary's cross? Is there anybody that you know in any place opened up in his name that went on a cross when he did nothing at all? Anybody, anybody can tell me, is there anybody that would have stayed on the cross like Jesus did? Having power to call 12,000 legions of angels and to stay there. Is there anybody in the midst of it that you know, that you can tell me, that would have stayed on the cross for wretch like me and a wretch like you? No, there's nobody like Jesus. There's nobody like God. That's why we ought to make it easier for anybody walking and going to get the light of Jesus. I'm almost done. Not all parts of the scriptures are equally clear or easy to understand. It is helpful to have wisdom from others in what they have seen in the scriptures. That's why Reverend Dean preaches the word of God. That's why I preach the word of God. I don't want to preach Alan, and she don't want to preach Dean. If you get Alan and Dean, you're going straight to hell. But if you get Jesus, he will deliver you out of your mother and your life. If you hear Jesus, Jesus will be with you every step of the way. You see, Jesus is not one that will cut and run when the things get bad. But Jesus will walk with you every step of the way. When you look around and things don't look good, I want you to know that Jesus is right there with you. When you don't know which way to go, that's when Jesus steps in and puts the light in front of you. When you see the light in front of you, know that it is Jesus leading you through your mud, through your mire, through your sickness, through your distress, whatever it is, he's going to lead you through. The meaning here will be plain to anyone who has had to stumble through darkness. I want to tell you, I've had some darkness in my life. You don't have to admit it, but I'll admit it. Because I want you to know that the light of Jesus is true. When you stumble through darkness, when you stumble through some things in your life, when you've had strain and stress on your life because of the darkness, it is that in the midst of it, it's strain when every time you turn around, you're always avoiding obstacles that may cause you injury because you have darkness in your life. You see, my brothers and my sisters, one of the things that we must admit in this country is that mental illness is a darkness. When we see mental illness, it's a darkness. It's somebody that doesn't know how to navigate through the things in their life. I'm so glad that Jesus is here and that Jesus is available because when Jesus is here and Jesus is available, there's light unto your pathway. There's light that you don't have to worry about obstacles anymore. That's why the Bible says that he'll make your enemy your footstool. That's why he walks with you in the valley of the shadow of death. Yes, it's because he is the light of the world. Spiritually, that light is God's word. The word shines a light at our feet to help 
us to avoid the perils of daily life. It, it helps us at dealing with the temptations that will cause us to fall short of the glory of God. God's word includes stories from which we can derive guidance. When we read those things in the Bible, they are memorable stories that can come to mind when we need them the most. It includes both general principles and specific things that God can show and help us to get through. Do you ever wonder why in the Bible he puts uh, Daniel in a lion's den? Because he wants you to know that nothing that ever happens to you, that he won't make a way for you. Isn't it strange how he puts the three Hebrew boys in a fiery furnace? It's bad enough that it's a fiery furnace, but they turn it up hotter than it is before. Somebody here, if not all of us, have been in our own fiery furnace. But the truth of it is that Jesus was right there with you. Isn't it a wonder why the woman with the issue of blood, she went to the doctor, doctor couldn't help her. She used all of her money, and her money did her no good. But when she got down on her knees and she called her way to Jesus, that which was not done before was now done in the name of Jesus. Isn't it strange how the man who every day they bought him and they put him by the gate and he begged for alms, he seen Peter there and it was there that Peter says, silver and gold I have not, but that which I have. Jesus, as the light of the world, Jesus will change the life of everybody. If we know God's work, let me ask the question hypothetically. Do you know God's work? Do you know that God's word got power in it? It's got unmovable power. It's got power to cause things to happen when you call on the name of the Lord. How many in here can witness and will be a witness that when you call on his name, he'll move mountains out of your way, he'll make level, lower places level, he'll change all the forces of things in your life. If we know God's word, it will shine a light on our path to save us from danger. Yes, my brothers and my sisters, the whole scripture is a light shining in dark places. Yes, we've got to dust off our Bibles and we've got to open them up every day. For every day that you open up your Bible, you will find the light of Jesus shining in your life. It will be a lamp or a torch to be carried in the hand of a believer. That's why you ought to have the Word of God with you no matter where you go. Put it on your cell phone. Get a mini Bible. Get a big Bible. But get the Word of God so you can have it with you. Yes, while we pass through this dark world, yes, you see the darkness every day. You see the corruption in our government. You see the corruption going on all around. You see killing every step of the way. You see killing of our children in the school. You see them running in churches and killing up folk. Yes, we're in a dark world. And he is in the presence of the state of imperfection. But I stopped by to tell you this morning, get the light of the world. Get the light and carry it with you. Get the light and light up your life. Get the light and it'll help you through your trials. It'll help you through your situation. This is the standard of your faith. This ought to be the practice of your life by the light of the lamp and the difference between true and false doctrine. We ought to be and knowing that the word of God is true. We ought not deal in false doctrine which will cause us to be this. But I want to tell you that in the midst of it, no matter how bad it may seem, when you've got the word of God, it will bring life into your life. It will cause a manifestation of the blessings of God. It will cause you to walk in the straight and narrow. It will cause you to realize that God is with you and he has not left you, no 
says, we'll walk in the light. Yeah. Beautiful light. Come where the dew drops a mercy shine bright. Shine all around us by day in and by night. The word of God is only so good to those whose eyes are open. When we open our eyes, it will cause enlightenment through the Spirit of God, which is usually done by the Word of God. But my brothers and my sisters, we can have a lamp, we can have a torch, and we can have a candle. Yeah, yeah. We can have a light of any soul kind. But I want to tell you that if you're a blind man, You'll never see the light. But only when you open your eyes to the word of God will you see the light that will guide you in your life. I stopped by to tell you today, I don't know who needs it, but we all probably do. That when we deal with this, we need the light in order to walk through this life. Trouble don't come. But when you got the light, trouble will go. Problems will arise, but when you got the light, problems are going to go. Yeah. That's why when Brother Mike sang that song, I know that in the midst of it, it don't last always. Because when we got the light of Jesus Christ, when we got the light that shineth in darkness, and darkness comprehended it not, oh yes, when we got the light, we can walk on and not worry about tomorrow. When we got the light, we're not concerned about what men will do. Because when we got the light, we know that God's got all power in his hand. I stop by to tell you today, walk in the light. Walk in the beautiful light. Let it shine all around you. By day in, by night. Jesus is the light of the world. If you know that he's the light of the world, give God some glory. Give God some
Some of them aren't going to answer because they've been hushed up. We call out names. Some have decided to walk in the darkness instead of walk in the light. But my brothers and my sisters, when you put everything before God, you're walking in darkness. Make your sacrifices unto God because God has sacrificed His Son for you. And so when we come today and we accept the broken body and the spilled blood, we're accepting it because of what God has done. He reminds us of the light that He's given to us. He reminds us that Jesus is the light of the world. So therefore, when we accept the broken body and the spilled blood, it is a renewing of our minds. It is the renewing of our state of walking in the light. The Bible says, as all that you do it, you show more suffering and death until I shall come again. So before we do that, if there's anything that you've fallen short about, that's the conversation between you and God. God our Father, we come and we thank you. You spared our lives to see this first Sunday in 2022 in July. God, we're grateful that when we don't know, when we can't see, we know that you are the light of the world and we look up to you because when we look up to you, things look better, things look brighter. For what we didn't know, we find it in you. So God, we ask that thou would take these common things that we're using right now, touch them, and move them to a spiritual use. <clears throat> so that as we accept the broken body and the spilled blood, that it would cause the renewing in us, cause us to want to walk continuously in the light of your word. Bless now in the matchless name of Jesus the Christ, we pray. And all that love the Lord, say amen. amen. Please take your bread out. On the night in which he was to be betrayed, he blessed it, he broke it, he gave it unto his disciples and take eat, this is my body, which is broken for you. Let us do likewise. In a likewise manner, he gave thanks for the blood, the wine. He said unto them, This is my blood, which is shed for you, is good for the remission of sin. As often as you drink it, it show from the suffering and death until I shall come again. He said, we won't do it anymore until we shall meet in that new Jerusalem, in that place which has, I'm going to prepare for you. Let us do likewise. Amen. Before we get ready to go, let me just share. Y'all can sit down Let me just share a couple of things. Get the couple of things. Couple of things. Um, last week, we gave out our plaques. Sister Veronica, can you come forward? We weren't here last week, but we have this plaque for you. You've been faithful. And bringing food, you never want to be Church 
Matthew 25, 40, Pilgrim Baptist Church, Reverend Ronald Allen, and this was presented on June 26, 2022. We want to give it to you for your work that you've done here at the church.
whether I willingly or unwillingly know that I've done it, my intention is not to offend anybody. But remember, I got a life, I got a wife, I got a family, I got all those things you got. And yet I still got to preach the word of God in season and out of season. And so all I want to do is just encourage you to keep coming, encourage others to come, encourage others to come back. Listen, they're, they're going to be at cookouts today. They don't have no mask on. They, they're going to be down the shore, tight as ticks next to each other. There ain't no reason why you can't come here and give God glory, give God praise. There's no reason why our choir stand ain't full. Why we got to have six people that are holding up the blood state banner and other people are escaping this way. You can think that there's some other way. You can believe in Buddha. You can believe in that. You can believe in this. But the Bible says there's only one way and Jesus Christ is the way. Amen? Don't get caught up in man power. Don't get caught up in woman power. Get caught up in the Holy Ghost power. Amen? Amen. Amen. So, so be mindful. I'm grateful. I'm always grateful. I'm always willing to tell people when they say, well, where are you? I, I preach at Pilgrim Baptist Church. It's up on the hill. It's been there. We're celebrating. We're giving God's glory. And they're some of the best people I've ever met in my life. Amen? Amen. Now the last thing is you may somebody may ask you because they connected the church to me. I have been um, appointed by the Chief Justice of the Supreme Court of New Jersey to serve. I, I already served on the Supreme Court of New Jersey Ethics Committee for the district uh, I think it's District 12. And that covers Union County, Middlesex County, Essex County, and some of Morris County. But now the Chief Justice has appointed me as part of a special committee to look into uh, dealings with attorneys that have been disbarred and looking for them to come back. So uh, someone found out, saw it, called me on it. And so I gotta tell you all because Pilgrim Baptist Church is connected to me. I'm connected to it. And so if somebody say, oh, I saw your pastor's name connected to this, I want you to say, yes, he already told us about it. All right? So I'm proud of you. I hope you're proud of me. I thank God for each and every one of you. Amen? <laughs> Let's stand. Let us not forget our offering. I'm going to do our benediction and our prayer of peace all in one. Amen. One more time, Lord. You blessed us one more time. Another day, more light unto our pathway. You brought us from last week into this week. And we know that you're able to take us from this day to next week. God, there's so much darkness in the world. Let us be beacons of light unto the darkness in this world. Let us be peacemakers. Let us spread your goodness, your joy, unto those that have darkness in their life. Every place opened up in your name, God. Encourage them to speak peace unto darkness. Bring light into darkness. That's what the cross is all about. It's the light of the world. It's the place where your only begotten son gave light unto darkness. And the darkness comprehended it not. So right now, God... We just need you to use us to your glory and to your honor. Yes. Speak peace unto men, women, boys, and girls that are walking in darkness. Speak unto them. Let them come yielding unto Christ. 
that Christ might be the light unto them as he is unto us. God, we, we know that you can do it. We know that you're able to do it. Because when darkness was in our minds, you spoke and the light became vivid unto us. We opened our eyes and we saw Christ leading us in the direction we should go. So we just ask that Christ would do that for this dying world. For this darkness that has come upon the face of the earth. For you spoke and light came. So right now, God, we ask that you would speak. And light would come unto the light of these that are walking in darkness. We thank you right now for this privilege and this honor. We thank you. Now, God, as we go our separate ways, we know that your light is marvelous enough to light all of our pathways at the same time. Bless now, God, that there may be peace among our land, that there may be peace among the world. God, let us remember why it is that we're celebrating tomorrow, that we want peace in the land. Now, God, we know you're able to do all things exceedingly. 